I'm Aram Mokumov, the CEO of Crowdlinker, and today is our second interview on Product Sessions, which is a part of a larger series we'll be doing about the most trending, controversial, and discussed topics in our product industry. Here with me today, we have Anton Alexandrov, uh, who is the Associate Director of Product at CleverTap, which is a leading retention and growth platform to improve LTV and retention. Anton, welcome uh, to this series, and uh, thank you for coming and joining me today. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, so since this is a short format kind of interview series, I'm going to just jump into it. Okay. So first question I have, Anton, is ChatGPT has been out now for you know a bit of time. What's what's been your first reaction to it as a product leader? Um, right. So I heard about it from the news. Um, I think in the beginning of this year, um, it grabbed my attention. I think when. Uh, basically, I mean, it was in mainstream media and Microsoft announced it's, now, it's investing 10 billion, right? So obviously there are large expectations on, on what this um, is bringing to, to the table. So uh, it was more of a, um, of a novelty to me uh, as much as, for example, DALI was last year. And I did play around with DALI, but um, it's an image generation. So it's not very applicable to my day-to-day -day work. I did some funny, funny pictures and then I left the site. Uh, for ChatGPT, I think it, it left an impression when I started using it and then when I started listening to podcasts about it and reading about it because it really uh, is re re very capable with the current version and it can do a lot. So right now I am impressed so far uh, with what it could do and I think it's, I mean, obviously it's only, only going to get better. Awesome. So what are some powerful use cases uh, that you've come across uh, with ChatTP for product management? Mm -hmm. uh, do you mean in like day-to-day -day execution of product management or? Yeah, it could be things that you've seen others do. It could be things mm -hmm. that you've done yourself, experiments you've run, mm -hmm. anything that, you know, you could be like, wow, that was like, that's a yeah. good use case. And I got some really positive results out from yeah. it. Yeah. I think um, I personally have used it for a few things. Uh, first is research. So instead of having to Google a certain topic, I just go and ask like a straightforward question. And it could be about product management frameworks. It could be about a um, specific technical topic. Uh, and then it summarizes the information. And then the nice thing about it is you don't have to look for the website. And you don't have to look for the essence of the information. You can just ask it to give it to you, right? Give me the five critical things that I need to learn on this topic so I can talk about it, for example. So that's the one thing, the research. And another thing I tried is actually uh, it helping me using a more technical tool. So I tried using uh, Looker, basically, so Google Play's Data Studio, uh, together with uh, uh, storage buckets in Google, basically moving files over, putting them in BigQuery, analyzing them with Looker, um, and I hadn't done that uh, from end to end by myself. And I used it as an assistant throughout the entire time. And it literally gave me like instructions on what to do. And once it gave me like five steps, I would ask it, okay, step three, I'm stuck at this stage. And then it gave me like prompts on how to get unstuck. So I did something that I think by myself, uh, it would have taken a weekend to research on how to do. I did it in two or three hours. It was really efficient hmm. so you used it more in the sense of um it giving you a path forward in terms of what what steps you need to follow in order to like get something set up and 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 working yeah um that's very specific uh, application in terms of a technical tool that i need to use so okay. sometimes as a product manager um i don't want to wait for my data team to get me a piece of data right it's always you're dependent on other stakeholders uh, it's best if you sometimes can do the analysis or the work yourself. Uh, and this is helping me get up to speed with tools that uh, previously I was just uh, apprehensive about and didn't want to spend the time on onboarding. Now it's much faster for me to do that. Okay, awesome. And so uh, with ChatGPT specifically, or, you know, I don't know if you've tried out AutoGPT yet, which is mm. like, it's, it's like, you know, bigger grown up version. Um, how are you using it? with some other examples within your company or mm -hmm. personally using it, you know, as a product leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so 
again, personally, uh, ChatGPT itself, I would use for research, um, I would use for um, technical tool onboarding for now uh, at its current capabilities. And then AutoGPT, as far as I know, it, it can do stuff, right? It's not just a chatbot. It literally can um, build a website for you um, to a certain extent. Um, I haven't used it so far, but I think that's where things are heading. So if I was a product leader, um, I think I'll be looking at two different directions in terms of uh, leveraging AI and things like ChatGPT or OpenAI more, uh, more precisely. One is just um, enriching my product with AI functionalities, right? Making it a better product, maybe. So our product has segmentation. We already have built predictive segmentation that uses AI. What else can we make easier for our customers or more power for us insights? So enriching your product itself. And then the other one, which I think in many cases would be even more important because not everything works with just sticking AI to, to, to mm -hmm. a product, right? And making it better. Uh, another one is making your team better and your organization better. So um, I've seen my colleagues have also started using AI, I think, uh, or ChatGPT as well. So I think anyone who is not using it probably would fall behind at some point uh, slowly. Um, and I think you can use AI to make your whole organization more powerful. One thing I was thinking of, like, have your own personal company assistant. So if you feed it your confluence data, your Jira data, your Slack data, and everything else, you got to your, I don't know, butler in the company that knows everything, knows who's responsible for what. You can go and ask him, like, hey, I need this dependency, I need this feature, who should I talk to, and what has been discussed already. So things that are improving your organization's efficiency are also going to help product leaders basically be faster and better at, at product development and overall. Okay. And, you know, within your company or with peers in other uh, product leadership roles at other, you know, businesses, mm -hmm. what's, what's been, what, what have you been hearing in terms of, uh, you know, from a top-down perspective in terms of leadership saying, hey, guys, you know, jump into this we need to like wrap our head around it or are you seeing them being more like siloed like you know individuals just are are using it and experimenting with it without any really clear agenda in terms of like uh the strategy side so feature wise we are heavily investing into leveraging it uh, in the product um and it's not public yet so i can't go into specifics yeah, but no, we want fine. to enrich enrich our product with uh Open AI's capabilities and general AI capabilities. Uh, Team-wise, I know our engineering organization is already looking at Copilot uh, with GitHub. Um, I know many engineers are already by themselves uh, using ChatGPT for, for, for their work. Uh, so it's mainly, I think, uh, those two directions, right? Engineering leadership, uh, thinking about how can people be more efficient, uh, and then product leaders thinking like, how can we make our product more powerful with, uh, with ChatGPT? It's still like, I mean, still people are wrapping their heads around it. It's been one, two, three months, uh, but it's, it's, it's a very rapid adoption. And, um, just by the amount of information I see on LinkedIn from other people as well, on application and users and how many new companies are even being built right now based on open AI. Uh, I think it's going to evolve rapidly. It's going to be a completely different thing in three months that we're talking about. For sure. So my next follow-up question is like, as a product leader right now, what would you say to others in terms of what they, sh what would be the most worthwhile investment for them to like take on now in order to be ready for the new, you know, generative AI or AI mm -hmm. era? Um, use it, I think in short, I mean, and make, everyone who's working with you use it as well, because uh, people need to get used to it. I think that's going to be the new normal, the way remote working kind of became a new normal. Um, I think it's going to be a, an add-on to every task that we're doing. Um, I don't think jobs are in danger <laughs> over the past uh, next one or two years or so, uh, but I think people will just get much more efficient. Uh, having this thing and the sooner people on board and understand how it works and there are skills involved in using it as well, right? You need to fit it the right prompts and uh, interrogate it in the right way so that you get the most value out of it. 
maybe even organizing sessions, training sessions, onboarding sessions, sharing best practices in your PM organization on how people have used it. I, for example, every time I use it in a meaningful way, I share it with my coworkers. One thing I forgot to mention is I also used it to analyze MPS surveys, for example. We have a very um, high volume data from quantitative responses, open text responses to MPS surveys. You just feed them to it and ask it to give you the positives and the benefits that are most prevailing for all this. And it just summarizes for me and I would have done like manual work to target it, for example, two years ago. So uh, just continuously using it, um, getting better at it would be most beneficial at this stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, seeing how it evolves in the future. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. Last question. Uh, controversial opinion, okay? In your thoughts right now, ChatGPT or what you know, OpenAI is doing, or what others are doing in like the whole AI space right now, do you feel this whole thing's potential doomsday scenario or a, a, a paradise, a haven for us people in product and technology to start, you know, making our lives easier? Um, yeah, I think uh, short midterm. Uh, it's definitely paradise. Um, I think it's going to make not our just our PM lives easier. I think it's going to make everyone's lives easier. Um, I think we're going to do a lot less work um, very quickly uh, and we'll be able to focus on maybe more enjoyable activities. I think long term, uh, it's probably a those day scenario. I'm one of these folks that uh, <laughs> really believes that uh, at, this, at some point this would probably inherit uh, whatever we are in this world. Um, but yeah, in the long term, uh, we are all dead anyway. So that's how I say it. But yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. Great. Okay. Thank you for sharing that opinion. Uh, okay. So that's a wrap. Anton, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on our show. Yeah. Thanks, Aram.